I can't believe I ended up on Reddit front page. I don't frequent Reddit very often and the uh, subreddit mods are not a fan of mine at all. If you guys don't know, I wrote a thread on Reddit two days ago and it has hit front page. 800 comments. I've responded to a huge bunch. I posted a win streak, but I posted it in a, to start the conversation on the non-surrendering because that is a very big deal right now. Very big conversation that I think people are ready for, you know, and it did start a very good conversation. I like it. I like it. This sort of stuff being put in the forefront. I think it's very good for the community because every day we have something negative you know on these threads so having this sort of stuff is pretty good and yeah i wrote a very small thread i didn't even like it wasn't very very well written i just did it to like honestly wanted to show off this fucking bad boy 64 percent huge win streaks because 18 win streak in challenger i don't know if i've ever seen that that's ridiculous so yeah we can we can check it out a little bit and read the comments this community has so much impact man like whatever we kind of discuss it's disproportional the effect and the ripple effect off of it to the size of this community i feel like we have some voice and positive influence congratulations on your success can we get five wins and emerald amount of course you can it's a lucky spree but could you tell me your mindset behind the gameplay do you have fate because they're champion scale how do you not tilt from an easy win being stretched out to a coin flip elder steel i don't play a league anymore coming home from office to grind out games just feel like i had a chore yeah true that makes sense very reasonable way this is what a lot of people are like oh but what if i work like 12 hours in a coal mine and then come back to play league of legends and i get a troll in my lobby that like what the fuck are you doing in league of legends after 12 hour day you know like why are you playing ranked homie like you're not there to compete because again this is too much and it's too too much bullshit if you get the enjoyment from just stomping games then the league is really really bad so yeah i this is basically the encapsulation of the mindset what do we do i try to have a firm belief that i'll find a creative way to turn the game around no matter what even if i don't believe like the last game i don't believe we're gonna fit like i'm not delusional all right Right? But I'm trying to delude myself for the sake of pushing out the limit test on the idea, you know, the philosophical idea. And it didn't work many, many times. Like self-delusion to nah, we win and then we win. Obviously, there are times when I think the game is theoretically doomed, but then we go up the beaten path in terms of game plan, right? No longer playing textbook wing cones, playing tilt to catch enemies. Let's see. They find a lack of enemy experience playing to Velkos even challenger level provides you with any advantage. This is an awesome thing because Velkos is not very common. So playing versus enemies who don't know how the Velkos works can provide you with a decent advantage. The thing is, it's not as easy. It's not like there's nautilus hook and enemies don't know nautilus can hook right that's not how the cheese works the cheese works is if enemies don't know my manipulation patterns and if they don't know how i combo to bait them into these like subtle ways to nudge them into the place where i want them to be right if they're not aware of that they're gonna fall into it the real trick is understanding whether enemy is aware right because the worst enemy is that is aware but he plays like he's not aware so he can kind of it goes back and forth so if enemies do know how to play against focus then it becomes a mind game level field okay level playing field and it's beautiful can confirm this guy just mind controls you to walk in his ability is fucking disgusting in with 200 ping i was just having play so defensive in lane post six how press it was <laughs> wait i don't know who's monty sucker my apologies if i don't know but yeah that's a funny comment first time i found you on reddit yeah i'm not there much i had a different account but it got banned on league subreddit league subreddit modes do not like me at all so most of my threads get taken out immediately how much time did you spend mastering well because the other champs how you perform this is a good question a lot of people ask all the time like what are the other champs so here pay attention if you care about that sort of stuff so yeah over a decade since February 2014 27th. Similar champs include Zerat, easier aggressive, more direct snowball option, better against squishies. Ziggs, easier defensive option, stalling out the games, playing for a team. Lux, super easy balanced version. She can play both, but she does get countered by hard tanks. Then you have Syndra, which is very, very direct, reliable, and scaling version. All right. You have Vey, but Vey is a little bit complex. He's complex, different patterns, doesn't play only Velkos, he plays more like uh control as well. I saw the game we play with Baus. Here we go. Like people from the Baus game. Awesome. The only reason you won is because you two refused to FF and the comeback was hilarious. Lovely mentality. This is just the, the, the perfect, the most absolutely perfect proof of concept that game, which is why I love it so much. And which is why it resonated with so many people and it got like 130k uh, views on YouTube. It's instantly like top five videos I've ever published on YouTube because we show that if we honestly tell people there's no way in hell you're going to surrender this. Bounce type, like it's not going to happen. Like you're barking up the wrong tree. Surrender barking anyway so it's not gonna happen you, you, you can't you can't surrender if you remove the surrender possibility then i was forced to play the game out because it's beneficial for both her and me like, what was that timing holy fucking shit that was kind of good okay so we have this one this isn't true in the past week in any match i have three individuals afk and found on clicking and casting abilities permit lever buster inevitably lose 45 i mean the whole purpose 
they were doing this is to get out of the game ASAP. And because they're trying to force you to FF. They won't be doing this if the game cannot be surrendered by 20 minutes. Some might, small percentage, but they would get banned. Like, you just report to get banned. So, yeah. Has that big fan? How sorry your shoulders have to make you focus on the sport and shield you pretty much all by yourself? Yeah, I don't know if you've shown this to YouTube, people. Um... Volkos died. Um, Volkos is the number one support right now, both in Master and Challenger, worldwide, not just the US, because of my uh, big sprees. <laughs> so that's pretty good. What's up? I've never heard that one before. Awesome. That's what I skipped out. I didn't feel comfortable talking, like, uh, or, uh, writing bullshit on this one. My mom passed away from cancer a year and a half ago, and it was, like, the worst year of my life. It was horrendous. I wouldn't wish that upon anyone, even the worst enemies, but yeah. Anyway. I have ever written a slur in that case, how to explain St. Peter and the Gates of Heaven. Nothing to explain. Gates aren't real and free will doesn't exist. This is a very funny thread. Uh, <laughs> Trick 2G in shambles because gates aren't real. That shit's so funny, man. <laughs> uh, what do you think some people are really, really aggressive and attached when it comes to the idea of surrendering? Especially on TikTok, whenever I go into comments of your videos, people are trying so desperately to defend FFing. Yeah, this happens a lot. Even on stream, I'll occasionally have people like trying to completely go over this radical mentality. Improve you wrong, even attack you personally. Yes, this is very often happens it gets so damn emotional almost like invalidates their whole character it's so weird to me and i really don't understand it yeah now obviously it's not an easy mentality all right it's definitely a difficult mentality because it requires admitting mistake at least part of the blame has to go to you as soon as you adopt this which is by far the best thing you can do it's just people get so attached to the idea they get personally offended if you say that surrendering early is pretty bad like i don't know i just feel like they, they root a lot of their beliefs in that so if you derive all of your ego and self-worth from being better than everyone at this game you're incapable of admitting that you made a mistake and got outlined or outplayed or lost the game due to your part so the best option is to offload the blame absolve yourself of guilt attack your teammates and then surrender quickly go next so you can play another stomp that you flip in your favor i guess that's one protective way you can go about your ego and i think in that case if you say that even maybe rightfully so like they've said this about some games where they got hardcore coin flip but that cannot be the case in the majority because it just simply isn't objectively because then you wouldn't be able to improve so i guess it's just people like refusing to get better how to super elchi velkus compared to yours playstyle difference overall skill builds yeah elchi velkus is awesome amazing us uh support elchi plays an incredible lane pressure but uh, i do play map a bit more I'm, i've been more experienced in playing other roles so okay this is a common one uh why shirelius i see it a lot and to me it feels like situational buy but on village i see it a lot that's our okay boost nice i think the stats are superb 8% move speed is incredible on anything uh you get haste and you get ap and you get mana region basically everything you want and team enhancement and this is a big concept to grasp and this is why it works this one little sentence is why everything works especially in high elo but everywhere even unconsciously people play on timers people base their gameplay on timers if you can respawn and leave the base one second earlier if you can recall leave the base one second earlier we were catching more than that but just to prove the point if you're just slightly faster you can mess up with internal timers of enemies and they will be caught with their pants down over extending over aggressing enemy mid laner sees support goes missing on the minimap and he thinks okay i have 15 seconds until he arrives mid so he minimaxes and plays aggressive guess what you're there at 13 seconds and he's caught with his pants down uh, these timers are so damn valuable that let's say you rot start rotating at the same time as enemy support you're both moving up the map you're faster two seconds that breaks the fight because you're there you get the first kill especially if you have reset champs which almost always do in solo kill like just Tana, Jinx, Viego, whatever, you know, Darius, you instantly win the fight. And I think in another comment, I uh, liken this sort of stuff to a few millisecond difference in a shooter game like Counter-Strike. If you peak and you're faster by just a few milliseconds than the enemy, doesn't matter if it's one millisecond. If you're faster, you win. I mean, provided you're both aiming perfectly. So one minor millisecond can change the outcome of not you just winning that duel and killing him, but now it's not 4v5, but 5v4. And then maybe he'll subsequently get more kills due to your positioning. And maybe you got a triple kill because because you were one millisecond faster here, right? So this is just what summarizes the playstyle. How many times did you win because the enemy team FF? This is great also. This is on the piggybacking on the idea that if everybody surrenders a lot, then not surrendering is a huge advantage, right? Because a lot of games, about like 30, 40% in my estimation, enemy surrendered on these games. And guess what? Every time they did, I'm super happy. I love it when enemies surrender. I pray for it because that I, I know they're like one, two team fights away from losing this game. Like one, two, 
bad team fights from completely losing the game. It's stressful. I'm happy when enemies surrender. And you can just use that feeling and reverse engineer. You do the same. If you're playing a game and you're so far ahead and enemies surrender, you're happy because you're out of the game and now you get to play another one and you don't have to stress about losing that one. And now you reverse feeling and think about on the enemy side, like you shouldn't surrender. Oh, this is a very interesting one. Can you give macro examples finding a way to come back even in D1 people are still contesting Drake? You need to have clear protocols. This this is a use a theoretical example of playing a early game call, let's say you're playing Renekton and stuff versus Cassidy. And Cassidy gets fed and now you're behind. This is I, I use this because the real example that happened like two days ago and we won the game. Enemy Cassidy was fed early and they were always scaling us hard. What do we do? We win the game. Why? How? It's impossible. If you play standard lanes, you lose. If you scale, you lose. So what do you do? League 101 won't lead us anywhere. Standard lanes don't work anymore. Promote grouping, try force, tilt fights. One by one enemy being in places where you shouldn't be. Try to trick them. Don't be afraid to give towers or trade objectives because at that point, everything is like fucked. You know, you, you go crazy aggro. Your job is to play on the enemy's desync. You know, enemies don't have perfect synergy. Catching one, catch two, catch three. You'd be surprised how often catching just one leads to a total collapse of enemy structure. And that's why support is great because you're the moving piece. You're a guy who's afraid to move. You coordinate the place and you focus the game flow to a certain area based on your vision. And there's this is a kicker and we're gonna end it here because I'm, I'm too lazy to, to keep going on this more. Mathematically surrendering is idiotic and I love I love this. This is absolutely true and I keep talking about this. Giving up 50 LP because winning a game uh, you would assert is equivalent to two wins instead of trying to win it's griefing. But people every time brought up to how regular climbing win rate is 55 to 60% you need to have something like 1.6 to 3% chance to justify. Yes! Very low percent chance to win which is always higher on like I, I, I believe. It's always higher than this shit to justify it. It's almost always worth playing out the games. And all it comes down they want surrender it's not actually informed choice. They're not trying to climb officially they're uh trying to feel good and strong this is exactly it mathematically just it's not a sound decision it's an emotional decision this this one is also perfect i'm so glad it went in depth because this is something i explained as well so if you're lower win rate okay if you're 51 52 percent you have to be so sure of a loss that they're basically already hitting your nexus at which point you're not saving anywhere near 10 minutes precisely and th here's the best part if you're higher win rate if you're like 70 percent win rate your chance of comeback because you're not that elo player is way higher than it would have normally been further pushing the opposite equation balancing it out so it's still worth for you to play it out this thread is great i i love the comments comments were surprisingly positive i thought this was gonna get buried in, in the dirt you know so it's very very cool uh, it's nice to see that community slowly starting to shift and, and and turn and think this way along these lines i absolutely love it keep fighting the good fight guys and yeah trust me in a world where everyone ffs easily if you don't ff ever you have crazy advantage you cannot not climb it's that simple